Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on Romero's Living Dead series with Day of the Dead. Now, Day of the Dead came out in 1985 and, of course, is written and directed by George A. Romero. And this is the third film in George A. Romero's Living Dead series, the first two films in this series being Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. Now, I almost want to say that Day of the Dead is my favorite film in Romero's Dead series. Like, there's a part of me that really does think that this is the strongest film in the franchise. However, I love Dawn of the Dead so much that I almost can't say that. Like, for me, Day of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead, I go back and forth between which one is my favorite film in this series because... I like both films equally, but I like them for different reasons. Dawn of the Dead had a lot of dark subject matter, but it was still a very fun movie and was kind of a black comedy. Day of the Dead is probably the darkest and most depressing film in this series and is also probably one of the darkest and most depressing zombie films ever made. And I mean that in a good way. Like, this is a dark, dark freaking movie. Now, not only is Day of the Dead probably the darkest film in this series, but this is definitely the goriest film in this series. And I remember I first saw this movie when I was a little kid. This was actually the first film in the series that I saw, and when I saw this as a little kid, I was like just freaking taken aback by how gory the film was. And of course, I was a little kid at this time, so I didn't see a lot of the movies I would see later on, but at the time I first saw this, this was probably the goriest horror film I have ever seen, and I still think the gore effects in this movie hold up today. Like, they're really, like, realistic gore effects, and I also think this movie has the best example of Tom Savini's makeup effects. Like, a lot of the makeup effects for the zombies, it looks a lot better than it did in Dawn of the Dead, and once again, I really do think, in terms of makeup effects, this is the best example of Tom Savini's work. And not only is Day of the Dead a great horror film, but there's also a lot of really good commentary in this movie about what could happen to society if we lose our humanity. And there's also commentary on things like gender issues and even religion. And also, there's a lot of philosophy in this movie. Like, I would say that this is one of the most philosophical zombie films I have ever seen. But Day of the Dead is just a fantastic movie, and I think is a criminally underrated movie. Well, it was underrated when it first came out, because when this movie first came out, it really didn't do too well at the box office, and I know critics hated it, but over the years, this film has definitely garnered a cult following, but truthfully, I think it deserves more than a cult following. I think this movie deserves deserves to be put on par with the first two movies, which a lot of fans do put this on par with the first two movies, but at the same time, though, there are still a lot of people who do kind of crap all over this movie, which I don't think is fair, because... In my opinion, this film comes very close to being the best film in this franchise. Also, the music in this movie is phenomenal. Like, actually, the music in this movie is actually my favorite score for any of Romero's Dead films. Now, the plot of Day of the Dead is it set some time, possibly a few years after the events of Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. Now, in the first two movies, there was this phenomenon happening where the bodies of the recently dead were returning to life and attacking people, and anybody who was bitten by a zombie would die and then come back from the dead as one of them, and you realize 
realized in the first two movies that this was spreading across the entire planet like a plague, and you realized that zombies were pretty much taking over the Earth. And in this movie, it pretty much is the end of civilization. Like, you realize that because zombies have now taken over the Earth, human civilization is pretty much non-existent now. Now, the movie follows a group of scientists and soldiers who are living in this underground base in Florida, and you realize this was set up by the government, like, right when this was first starting, and probably right before society officially collapsed, and basically the scientists are there to do research on the zombies, and the soldiers are there to protect the scientists, but what happens in the movie is you start to see conflicts between the soldiers and the scientists, and really that's the main point of the movie, is that these people spend so much time fighting each other that they lose sight of the fact that there are zombies outside trying to eat them, and really the whole point of this movie, which was kind of the point of the first two movies as well, is that humans are the real monsters. Now, in the movie, you have a scientist named Sarah, who's actually trying to figure out exactly what's causing this phenomenon to happen, and possibly even find a cure for it, while you also have another scientist named Dr. Logan, who goes by the nickname Dr. Frankenstein throughout this movie. He's actually trying to domesticate the zombies, because he realizes that zombies have pretty much taken over the whole planet, and his idea is that mankind's only hope for survival is to tame the zombies and, once again, domesticate them. And in the movie, he actually succeeds at domesticating a zombie who he calls Bub. Now, in this movie, you do get some parallels with the Frankenstein mythos, like, Dr. Logan in the movie is nicknamed Dr. Frankenstein, and you could even look at Bub as being kind of a variation on the Frankenstein monster if you wanted to. And Bub is an awesome character, by the way, and I know the idea of a good zombie might sound really cheesy, but it really works in this movie, and you totally buy it. Now, the main villain of the movie is a character named Captain Rhodes, who is probably one of my favorite horror movie villains of all time. And Rhodes is such an evil bastard in this movie. But at the same time, though, if you look at it from his point of view, you can kind of see why Rhodes and his men would be a little pissed off at these scientists because they're down there risking their lives for these scientists and, like, it gets to a point where his men are getting so fed up with having to risk their lives for these people that you don't blame him for acting the way he does. At the same time, though, he handles the situation in the wrong way. And I actually think Rhodes and his men, even though they're the villains of the movie, they are three-dimensional characters because you do see where they're coming from, but at the same time, though, they're handling the situation in the wrong way, and they're refusing to look at it from the scientist's point of view, and really that's the main point of the movie, is that both the scientist and the soldiers in the movie are refusing to see the other's the other side's point of view, and that's ultimately their downfall in the end. And really, that's the main point of the movie, is which is more dangerous, the zombies or the people? 
Now, if you wanted to, you could draw a parallel between what's going on in the movie and the Cold War, which was going on in real life at the time this movie came out. Because the Cold War was really an ideological conflict. It was a conflict of ideas between the United States and the Soviet Union, and both sides were really refusing to see the other's point of view throughout the entire Cold War period, and you could almost look at what's going on in the movie, like this conflict of ideas between the soldiers in the, and the scientists as being kind of a parallel with the Cold War. But maybe I'm overanalyzing there, but this movie did come out in the 80s, which was the last full decade of the Cold War. Now, I actually think this movie does have some commentary on things like gender issues, because in the movie, the character of Sarah is the only woman in this underground complex, and throughout the film, you do get the idea that a lot of the men in this complex are looking down upon her because of the fact that she's a woman, and also throughout the film, Rhodes and his men constantly make sexist remarks to her. I also feel like this movie has some commentary on religion, because in the movie there's a scene where Dr. Logan is talking about how we have to domesticate the zombies, and he says they need to be tricked into being good little girls and boys, the same way we were tricked into the promise of some reward to come. And I can't help but to think that maybe Dr. Logan was talking about religion in that scene where he says the line the same way we were tricked into the promise of some reward to come. Like, I kind of feel like he was talking about religion in that scene. Like, it seems like Dr. Logan is the kind of person who viewed religion as a way to soothe the masses. Like, he doesn't really come off as being a very religious person, so it seems like that was his views on religion, but also later on in the movie, this character named Johnny, who is a helicopter pilot, he suggests to Sarah that what if the reason the dead are coming back to life is because it's God's judgment on mankind. But it's with the character of Johnny that you get a lot of the film's philosophy, and Johnny is perhaps my favorite character in the movie. And basically, Johnny's philosophy in the movie is that he doesn't believe in what they're doing in this underground base. Like, he doesn't believe in trying to find an explanation for how the dead are coming back to life, because, like, the way he sees it is the people in this underground base are trying to preserve the world that once was, and he feels that the world that we knew is gone, and the best that we can do now is try to start over and hopefully not make the same mistakes that mankind made before. Now, I want to say that my favorite scene in this movie is the scene where Johnny and Sarah are talking about what's going on, and Johnny tells her that if she's looking for an explanation for what's going on, he says, here's one as good as any I've ever heard, and he talks about how... Basically, mankind is being punished by God for their sins, and that's the reason the dead are coming back to life. Now, it doesn't actually say whether or not Johnny actually believes that, but you kind of get the idea that he feels like that's as good as any explanation you're going to get, because you already have the dead coming back to life, so why why wouldn't it be something supernatural? Like, so it doesn't actually say that that's actually what he believes, but it's really, his philosophy is, it's as good as any explanation you're ever going to get. Now here you come, here you come, with a whole new set of charts and graphs and records. What you gonna do? Bury them down here with all the other relics of what once was? I'm gonna tell you what is. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what is. You ain't never gonna figure it out. 
just like they never figured out why the stars are where they're at. It ain't mankind's job to figure that stuff out. So what you're doing is a waste of time, Sarah. And time is all we got left, you know. What I'm doing... It's all there's left to do. Shame on you. There's plenty to do. Plenty to do. So as long as there's you and me and maybe some other people, we could start over. Start fresh. Get some babies. And teach them, Sarah. Teach them never to come over here and dig these records out. You want to put some kind of explanation down here before you leave? Here's one as good as any you're likely to find. We've been punished by the Creator. He visited a curse on us. So we might get a look at like maybe didn't want to see us blow ourselves up and put a big hole in his sky maybe just wanted to show us he was still a bus man maybe he figured we was getting too big for our bitches trying to figure his shit out So yeah, Day of the Dead is an underrated classic, in my opinion, and I highly recommend this movie. This is definitely one of the darkest and most depressing zombie films ever made, and it's also one of the goriest zombie films ever made. But there's also a lot of social commentary in this movie about what can happen when people lose their humanity and when people refuse to see their enemy's point of view. And there's also a lot of commentary on things like philosophy, religion, and even gender issues. So yeah, Day of the Dead is an awesome movie, and if it wasn't for the fact that I love Dawn of the Dead so much, I would actually say that this is the best film in Romero's Living Dead series. Now, I believe this was also the first movie that Greg Nicotero worked on. I could be wrong on that, but I think this was actually the first movie that he worked on. I think he did some of the effects work for this movie, like he helped out Tom Savini with some of the makeup and special effects in this movie, and Greg Nicotero also has a small role in this movie as one of these soldiers. Now, Greg Nicotero would go on to do effects work for movies like Evil Dead 2 and Creepshow 2, and he was one of the people who started KNB Effects. Also, Greg Nicotero is now a big part of The Walking Dead. Like, he does a lot of the effects work for The Walking Dead, and he directed many episodes of The Walking Dead. And there's also a really cool Stephen King reference in this movie. In the movie, there's a scene where Dr. Logan is giving Bub all these different household objects to see how he'll react to them. And one of the things that Dr. Logan gives Bub is a copy of the book Salem's Lot by Stephen King. And I actually have the same copy of Salem's Lot that Bub had in the movie. Okay, not the same exact copy, but you get what I mean. Like, it's the same cover art and stuff like that. And it was a really cool little reference to Stephen King. Now, George Romero and Stephen King previously worked together on the movie Creep Show, and George Romero would go on to do several Stephen King adaptations. 
Now, as much as I loved the Stephen King reference in this movie, in a way that's kind of a continuity error because, now, Night of the Living Dead came out in 1968, so let's assume that all of this has been going on in the Night of the Living Dead universe since the year 1968. Now, Stephen King didn't write Salem's Lot until 1975, so if we're assuming that in the universe that this movie takes place in that all this has been going on since 68 that means Stephen King would have never written Salem's Lot but at the same time though in Night of the Living Dead they never actually stated when that movie takes place so you could assume that maybe Night of the Living Dead took place in the future and throughout the entire Night of the Living Dead series there is kind of a timeline issue because Dawn of the Dead is supposed to take place a few weeks after the events of Night of the Living Dead. However, Dawn of the Dead is clearly set in the 70s, while Night of the Living Dead appeared to be set clearly in the 60s. And this film appears to be set at best maybe a few years after the events of Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. So there's kind of a timeline issue there, and yes, I know I just showed that I'm a huge fucking nerd, that I'm analyzing and nitpicking the timeline of Romero's Living Dead series. It's just something I felt like I should point out that there is somewhat of a timeline issue in this series. Now, in this movie, there is also a cool little reference to the first movie. In the movie, they talk about a character named Major Cooper, who actually died right before the events of this movie. Now, I feel like that was kind of a reference to the character of Harry Cooper from the first movie, and since I'm a continuity nerd, the nerd in me is kind of trying to think of like a fan theory that maybe the character of Major Cooper is a relative of Harry Cooper from the first movie. Once again, that's just the nerd in me talking. Now, in 2005, George Romero would follow this movie up with Land of the Dead, which was the fourth film in his Living Dead series. There was also a direct-to-DVD movie called Day of the Dead 2, Contagium. Now, that movie was really an unofficial sequel, or a sequel in name only. Now, I actually have that movie on DVD. I got it for Christmas, like, a little over ten years ago now, and I remember I tried watching it one night, and I fell asleep through it, and I never tried watching it again. There was also a remake made to this movie in 2008. Now, I actually have not yet seen the remake, and truthfully... I don't think I'm ever going to see the remake. I tried watching it once, and yeah, I couldn't get through it. And I've heard a lot of people tell me that the remake sucks hard. And I tried giving it a chance, but I could not get into it. And I'm probably never going to watch the 2008 remake of Day of the Dead. There was also a spin-off comic book series written a couple of years ago, which apparently apparently explains the origin of Bub. So yeah, that's my review on Day of the Dead, and bye. No fucking good. What is that stuff? Something called beef treats, which the army provides us with so generously. He won't touch it. Shit, I wouldn't either. Sorry. We're fresh out of filet mignon. What is this? Part of Logan's plan to try and socialize these things? He told me himself they don't need for nourishment. What are we hoping for here? Hoping to satisfy the urge. You see, Sarah, they're... They are us. They are the extensions of us. They are the same animal, simply functioning less perfectly. They can be fooled, don't you see? They can be tricked into being good little girls and boys. The same way we were tricked into it, on the promise of some reward to come.